Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, all right, so I want to um, observe that the network is compromised where Professor Akintoye, who is actually billed or who was billed to read the proclamation, uh, where he is, the network is compromised. And um, we have done quite some bits to try to make it happen uh, over the past couple of hours. And um, it looks like that is not happening at this time. But however, uh, Professor Kintoye, the lead signatory for today's proclamation, is on the call. And then all the other signatories, the joint leadership of the MENAS Alliance, the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self Determination, so took the decision that the Secretary General of the LNC, who is also the co convener of the MENAS Alliance, will go ahead and read the proclamation. So ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have been waiting for is here. And I would like to invite the Secretary General of the Lower Niger Congress and the co-convener of the NINAS Alliance, uh, Barry Satoni Nadi, <laughs> Mr. Tony Nadi to read the proclamation on behalf of the NINAS Alliance. Notice of constitutional grievances, declaration of a constitutional force majeure, and a demand for transitioning process for an orderly reconfiguration of the constitutional basis of the Federation of Nigeria, being the joint proclamation of a sovereignty dispute by accredited delegates of the Nigerian indigenous nationalities of the southern and middle belt territories of Nigeria, issued the 16th day of December 2020 in Lagos. This proclamation is titled, Correcting the Mistake of 1914. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, as the distressed tradition of Nigeria wobbles in what seems its terminal throes, as young Nigerians rise up massively in revolt against a system that ruined their present and compromised their future, and as bloody conflicts rage in all parts of Nigeria in disputation the terms of the distressed Nigerian Union, and as concerns mount in the international community, first regarding the shaky future of the troubled Nigerian Federation, and second, the impact of a possible disorderly dissolution of Nigeria over the West African sub-region, the rest of Africa, and indeed the world. We gather here this day as accredited delegates of the constituent component nationalities of Nigeria, under the aegis of Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, being a joint cooperation for the self-determination initiatives of the Southern and Middle Belt of Nigeria on behalf of our various peoples and interests to pronounce an end to our toleration of Nigeria's unitary constitutional order. Unilaterally imposed and forcefully maintained by a section of the Nigerian country, in negation of the federal basis upon which Nigeria became one political union at independence in 1960 and in brutal subjugation of our collective sovereignties currently being forcefully and fraudulently appropriated by the Nigerian state. We gather here today before the global community to formally proclaim a sovereignty dispute in rejection of the further operation of the imposed unitary constitutional arrangements of Nigeria and in assertion of our inalienable right to self-determination. The history of the colonial beginnings of Nigeria as a commercial venture of Britain is too well known to admit any further representations here, but suffice it to recall, one, that the manipulations that went into the flawed foundations laid by the British in 1914 amalgamation of the protectorate of Southern Nigeria with the protectorate of Northern Nigeria as revealed in recently declassified British colonial records on Nigeria, created a lopsided union, locking the diverse peoples of Nigeria into one political union with two mortally opposed civilizations. Two, that as independence approached 1960, 
the diversities of various peoples of the Nigerian Union dictated the adoption of the federal constitutional model by the then three largely autonomous regions, namely eastern, western, and northern regions of Nigeria, as basis of entering into independence as one political union in 1963. Three, that amidst the early strains of post-independence Nigeria, arising mainly from the aforementioned foundational and the independent and post pre-independence manipulations by the British colonial rulers of the Nigerian Union, the military coups of 1966 truncated the federal constitutional basis of Nigeria and plunged the fledgling Union into a catastrophic 30-month war with its breakaway eastern region between 1967 and 1970, triggered by disputations around the terms of the Nigerian Union and living in its trail, human carnage in excess of 3 million people and a fractured union now resting on an unworkable unitary constitutional order imposed in 1979, first by fiat of the illicit federal government, which emerged since 1966, collapse of the Federation of Nigeria, forcefully hijacking and confiscating the sovereignties of the constituent component regions of Nigeria that federated their sovereignties in 1960 that the prevailing 1999 Constitution of Nigeria, which was a wholesale adoption of the 1979 edition via decree number 24 of 1999, revalidated, reinforced the aforementioned hijack and confiscation of the sovereignties, powers, and assets of the four erstwhile federating regions by the aforementioned illicit federal government of Nigeria, which by decrees fractured the four regions into 36 states, and completely emasculated by a 68 item federal exclusive legislative list that comprehensively stripped the federating states of all key assets, economic assets, and governmental powers, thereby creating a totally dysfunctional, corruption prone, over centralized system that has failed in every respect, manifesting in gross insecurity, decayed infrastructure, and mass impoverishment so that Nigeria with its vast human and material resource endowments has now emerged as the poverty capital of the world, as well as the global leading example of a failed state. Five, there is a countrywide consensus against the unitary constitutional arrangement imposed incrementally on Nigeria by a combination of guile, brute force, and impunity between 1966 and 1999 now codified by the 1999 constitution. This countrywide consensus has manifested in several unilateral regional and multi-regional actions in repudiation and rejection of the unitary constitution of Nigeria. The first indication that was uh, in the year 2000, the 12 contiguous state of the far north simultaneously imposed and began to implement Sharia in their domains against the express provision of the 1999 constitution, which in section 10 forbids the adoption of any state religion. This translates to a unilateral cessation from the secular union of Nigeria. Between 2005 and 2006, a sovereign conference of ethnic nationalities of Nigeria convened by the pro-national conference organizations, Buraco, deliberated exhaustively and produced a draft people's uh, constitution in 2006, which had the potential of restoring Nigeria to its damaged federal foundations. Though ignored by successive governments in Nigeria, that draft became the new federating consensus against the prevailing unitary constitutional order in Nigeria. It will be recalled that prior to the 1999 return to civil rule in Nigeria and before Panaco, there was Nadeko, which vigorously challenged both the adoration of military governance in Nigeria and Nigeria's unitarized federalism, both by military decrees. C. As a way of easing out the rejected military constitutional order and paving the way for the emergence of a new federating consensus, the conveners of Pronaco aggregating under the edges of the Movement for New Nigeria, MNN, being an alliance of the regional self-determination initiatives of the South and Middle Belt territories of Nigeria, here in Atako, the alliance. In May, 2000, in May of 2007, 
instituted a lawsuit at the Federal High Court in Abuja, challenging the legitimacy of the 1999 constitution on the grounds of fraud and forgery, and sought an order of court for the termination of the operation of the 1999 constitution via an 18-month transitioning arrangement. D, the eminent alliance by its eminent Lagos uh, declaration of June 30, 2011, jointly repudiated the 1999 constitution as the basis of the Nigerian Federation and mandated the alliance blocks to distill their various regional charters and constitutional drafts in readiness for the inevitable fundamental reconfiguration of the distressed Nigerian Federation to be ratified by referendums and plebiscites. We hereby adopt and incorporate the said eminent legal declaration of June 30, 2011 in support of this proclamation. E, pursuant to the mandates of the eminent legal declaration of June 30, 2011, the regional blocks of the eminent alliance convened their various regional solemn assemblies between 2015 and 2018, namely the April, 2000, April 27, 2015 solemn assembly of the peoples of the Lower Niger in Podakot, that is the Southeast and South South, that is Lower Niger territory. The 7th September 2017 Yoruba summit in Ibadan and the July 18, 2018 emergency assembly of the peoples of the Middle Belt in Makodi. Each of these regional solemn assemblies formally repudiated and rejected the 1999 constitution as the basis of federation. And, there, and hereby, we hereby endorse, adopt, and incorporate the resolutions reached by each of those solemn assemblies. F. Having rejected the 1999 constitution as the basis of the Nigerian Federation, and in the face of ferocious coordinated ethnic cleansing onslaughts, of the murderous Fulani militia against indigenous peoples of Nigeria. The MNN Alliance mobilized the people of the Alliance territories under the ages of the Nigerian Indigenous, National, indigenous uh, Nationalities Alliance for self determination to issue the joint multi regional Freedom Pact proclamation of December 11, 2018, by which the Alliance territories rejected the conduct of further national elections mandated by the repudiated national constitution and mandated a transitioning in place of the largely June 1999 constitution and demanded a transitioning in place of the largely June uh, 2019 national elections as a way of putting a time frame to the termination of the operation of the 1999 constitution and the distillation of successor constitutional protocols. The said Freedom Party Commission of December 11, 2018 is hereby adopted and incorporated in support of this present uh, proclamation. It is pertinent to note that across all the regions of Nigeria, various social, cultural, and ethnic interests, bad organizations have also been vehemently in uh, 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 also be vehement in expressing the constitutional grievances of their own people, some even violently. Thus, in the Yoruba on the Yoruba side, we have the Afeni Ferry, the Yoruba Elders Council, Agbekoya, the Yoruba Liberation Command, the YWC, and many more, including the Ilana Homo Odua, which now aggregates several Yoruba self determination initiatives across the world in the eastern part of uh, southern Nigeria. Habo Haneze, movement for the survival of the Jo ethnic nationality in the Niger Delta, that's Mosian, Ijo National Congress, INC, Ijo Youth Congress, DEF, Midwest Movement, the Niger Delta People Volunteer Force, MEND, MASOB, IPOB, Others in the Middle Belt. We have the Middle Belt Forum, the MBC, the Sokako, the Connecta, and many others. Several notable statesmen in Nigeria, including General Solu Chef Mobasanjo and Yakubu Gawan, both former heads of state, have lent their voices to the urgent imperative of the fundamental reform 
of the damaged constitutional basis of Nigeria, warning that any further delay may lead to the catastrophic collapse of the distressed Nigerian Union. Nigeria's former defense minister, Lieutenant General Theophilus Danjuma, had also urged indigenous peoples of Nigeria facing the ethnic cleansing hostages of the murderous foreign invaders to defend themselves and, land, and, and their lands in the face of obvious collusion of the federal government of Nigeria and its armed forces with the Fulani invaders. In the aftermath of the October 2020 end SARS protests, many, including the Nigerian Christian elders from now insist that Nigeria needs to be renegotiated. Between January and July of 2019, a delegation of the Alliance territories engaged the international community, especially stakeholder institutions in Washington, D.C., to alert the U.S. and the community of the degenerating security situation in Nigeria, where ISWAP, terror machinery of ISIS, made sweeping inroads into Nigeria and the late chart basing Nigeria as its hub. With large scale killings and dislodgement of Christian indigenous populations, mainly in the Middle Belt and the, and the South, and Korea was seen as a, mani a manifestly sympathetic of Nigeria and its armed forces in circumstances that present terror related concerns to the global community, particularly the United States. Three, specific constitutional grievances touching on the sovereignties of the constituent components of the distressed federation of Nigeria, which are beyond the powers of the legislative and legislative mandate of the National Assembly of Nigeria or the federal government of Nigeria to unilaterally address. address. Let me repeat, specific constitutional basis touching on the sovereignties of the constituent components of the distressed federation of Nigeria, which are beyond the powers and legislative mandate of the National Assembly of Nigeria or the federal government of Nigeria to unilaterally address. We continue with the specific constitutional grievances. One, the claim in the preamble to the 1999 constitution that we the people firmly and solemnly resolved to live in one political union and that we enacted and gave ourselves the, the 1999 constitution is self-evidently false as decree number 24 of 1999 by which the so-called 1999 constitution was promulgated outlined step by step the process by which the author of the 1999 constitution general Abdullah Mabaka and his armed forces provisional ruling council came out came about the, the, the document is labeled the 1999 constitution. This is a criminal usurpation of the sovereignties of the constituent components, whose exclusive right it is to make for themselves the constitution by which they will federate and be governed as an incident of their sovereignty, even by the admission of the 1999 constitution as section 14.2a, and I quote, Sovereignty belongs to the people of Nigeria from whom government through this constitution derive all its powers and authority. This is the fountain from which all other constitutional grievances flow. And there is no other remedy to this particular grievance than an autochthonous process by which the, constitu the constituent components will submit their peoples and their lands into a union and also stipulate the terms of that union to be ratified by referendums and plebiscites. We refer to decree number 24 as incorporated into the 1999 constitution and the preambular text of the 1999 constitution. It's still there for everybody to see. The claim that we made the constitution, that's the biggest complaint of the nationalities against that constitution. Two, the second grievance. A federation is a union of constitutions. And Nigeria became a federation of three largely autonomous regions at independence in 1960 when those regions, each armed with its own constitution, agreed to federate into one political union after a series of negotiations at Lancaster House in London between 1957 and 1959. The Midwestern region became the fourth region of Nigeria in 1963 from a constitutional process. The 36 states and 774 local government structure unilaterally imposed by the 1999 constitution fundamentally distorts the pre-1966 
uh, for regional federation, especially the power relations between the federating units and the federal government, which is supposed to be a creation of the federating units, rendering the Nigerian Union a unitary state away from the federal basis upon which the autonomous regions of the diverse peoples of Nigeria agreed to become one political union as independence. These imposed structures also create artificial permanent uh, political majorities and permanent political minorities, irrespective of ground realities in terms of population and other key indices with grave implications for representation in the places of decision making as well as resource allocation, amongst other debilitations. There is no other viable remedy for this particular agreement than reverting to the national negotiated basis of federating in terms of formations and preference, preferences ratified by referendums and plebiscites. Refer to the first schedule of uh, the, the uh, part one of the 1999 constitution. The, this, the summary of this uh, particular grievance is that uh, the formations in which the peoples agreed to relate have been fractured from four regions of 1966 to 36 states in which uh, the question of representation, resource allocation, and all kinds of uh, things uh, people uh, at twist, uh, ex expect in the Federation have been uh, compromised permanently against uh, some in favor of others. The third ground of uh, grievance we've taken to. The third ground of grievance is that the 68th item as federal exclusive legislative list is the mechanism by which the illicit federal government of Nigeria hijacked, confiscated, and sequestered the key economic assets as well as the most important governmental powers and authority of the federal units. Federally confiscated assets include oil and gas assets, the vast maritime assets of the coastal territories, solid mineral, including iron ore, aluminum, coal, limestone, and a wide range of precious metals and stones. The federally confiscated powers include the power to generate and transmit electricity, the power to operate a police service, and other services that might require the use of arms, the power to build, own, or operate seaports, airports, railways, highways, etc. 68 items. Also confiscated are the powers of over banking, insurance, copyrights, patents, trademarks, pensions, prisons, posts, company incorporation, marriages, elections into federal and state offices. The list continues. Some of the worst consequences of this federal hijack and confiscation of powers and assets was the seizure of the federal government by the federal government of educational institutions, particularly the great universities developed by the then region, which the federal government thoroughly degraded over the years. The same was the case with the manufacturing concerns established by the regions. The implication of this federal exclusive legislative list is that only the federal government shall have power and control over all the items listed while the federating units ah, are forbidden from any, anything coming under that list. To make things worse, even the few undertakings permitted the already emasculated states under the so-called concurrent list, 13 number, are expressly subjugated to the overriding powers of the federal government such that any conflict between the federal government and the state government in, of, in respect of any matter on the concurrent list, the interests of the federal government will prevail more than any other single cause. The disastrous consequences of this over-centralization of control over a large range of subject matters has been at the heart of Nigeria's uh, arrested development and the total system dysfunction, especially when viewed against the backdrop of the rapid social economic development in the pre-1966 region of Nigeria, which owned, controlled, and worked their respective economic assets to the benefit of their own people, exercised most of the powers now sequestered from them by the so-called federal government. The other over central, the, the over centralization comes with hideous inefficiencies that have been the root cause of the culture of corruption 
and waste in Nigeria as humongous assets and funds are held in the hands of the federal establishment that have no real contact with the development needs of the various parts of Nigeria. Thus, we are saddled with a situation in which people who have nothing with the who have nothing to do with the pressing needs of the true owners of the assets and who are now not in any way accountable to those true owners or anybody at all carry on most wastefully as armed robbers will do with their loot. Whether such public funds are proceeds from the sale of so oil six. and gas or from customs duties, operations of ports, company taxes or VAT, those who receive the funds as allocations simply treat the funds as their own share of the loot called Nigeria. In all, the entire system is designed to be resistant to development. The various agitations in Nigeria, from the Niger Delta Resource Control Agitation to the Yoruba OPC and Amotekon that seek control over Yoruba internal security, to the Biafra agitation by those in Eastern Nigeria who are so completely frustrated by the inequitable and unworkable Nigerian unitary union that seek outright exit from the union are caused by the 68 item federal exclusive electricity list. That Nigeria is without electricity or any meaningful infrastructure is on account of this federal exclusive electricity list. That Nigeria has become a poverty, the poverty capital of the world is due mainly to the exclusive list the broken down security situation in Nigeria is also largely due to this same exclusive list. The remedy to this particular constitutional grievance is to dismantle the exclusive list completely, restore the sovereign powers of the constituent components, which may in turn cede to the center only such powers as they freely wish in unfettered self-determination as dictated by the concept of federalism. We may refer to the second schedule, part one of the 1999 constitution that, that lists all of those uh, items on the exclusive list. Nigeria is where it is today on account of, largely on account of that. Number four, that the fourth ground of uh, grievance. Aggravation of existing constitutional grievances and extraordinary urgency for remedial action. As quite apart from the provisions of the constitution itself, there are aggravating circumstances that have arisen to impose an urgency on the peoples of Nigeria concerning the subject matter. And so, amidst trenchant demands by the peoples of the South and Middle Belt for the fundamental reconfiguration of Nigeria's unitary constitutional order to address the dysfunctional system under which security and infrastructure had completely broken down in Nigeria, the ferocious ethnic cleansing onslaught by the Fulani militia masquerading as hetzmen commenced throughout southern Nigeria and Middle Belt upon the emergence of Major General Muhammad Buhari in 2015 as the president of Nigeria, compounding the Boko Haram insurgency and terror campaign that was already ravaging the northeast of Nigeria, especially the Christian communities. Concerning the rapidly worsening situation and the Middle Belt, in the, in the South and the Middle Belt, as well as the glaring complicity of the federal government of Nigeria in circumstances that progressively validate the charge of outright collusion with the moderate Fulani militia, masquerading as henchmen, it is pertinent to point out the following. A, that president, that as president and commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, a Fulani himself, and the life grand patron of the Fulani Cattle Breeders Association, Magba, had asked the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, who had come to seek the federal government's intervention on the invasion of Benue State by Fulani herdsmen, to go home to his people and learn how to live in peace with the moderate Fulani herdsmen, who Buhari described as the Fulani of Benue. B. Nigeria's defense minister under President Buhari had declared that the developments blocking what he described as ancient cow grazing routes must be removed as all the cows and the herdsmen will bulldoze their way through the developments. C, the inspector general of police 
under President Muhammad Buhari, declared that the states which passed and enforced anti-open grazing laws were responsible for the violence being unleashed by the Fulani herdsmen, and that unless these laws were repealed, the situation could only get worse. That's the Inspector General of Police that should have been at the forefront of uh, you know, defending people from the attack of these herdsmen. D, amidst the agonizing cry of the peoples of the Middle Belt and the South regarding the invasion of their communities by moderate Fulani militia, the, the spokesman of the president, Buhari, Femi Adeshina, advised the distressed and endangered communities that it would be better to give up their lands to the Fulani in order to save their lives. E, under the watch of President Buhari, and at the outset of the post 2015 escalation of the Fulani Hesmen killings in southern Kaduna, the governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir El Rufai, had announced that he went to 14 different countries to appease the Fulani who come from those countries to kill in southern Kaduna. These appeasement measures, according to El Rufai, included the payment of uh, 100 million naira from the public treasury of uh, Kaduna State to the invading Modros Fulani militia. F, under the watch of President Buhari, a strange practice was introduced in which captured fighters of Boko Haram and other terror groups are freed by the federal government of Nigeria, which declares them repentant and actually absorbs them into the Nigerian military <laughs> to fight side by side with the uh, people who were chasing them just the day before. G, the recent unilateral declaration by President Buhari that Africans from all parts of Africa are free to enter Nigeria without visa and the consequent influx of Fulani into Nigeria who are being openly aided by the federal government of Nigeria to take over vast lands from the indigenous communities has exacerbated the undisguised ethnic cleansing by the invading Fulani, whom uh, the governor of Bochi State recently declared as being all Nigerians. The governor of Bochi State went on national TV to tell the rest of us that Fulani from all over Africa are Nigerians, and therefore not only are they to enter, but they can, you know, that they will have the first right of, uh, you know, enjoying whatever is available uh, to Nigerian citizens, wherever they are in Africa. On a scale, this particular point is happening. This particular point of compromising our sovereignty is happening on a scale that totally compromises the sovereignty of Nigeria itself. And therefore, that of all that of all constituent components of Nigeria, particularly the South and the Middle Belt, the massive influx, influx of dangerous looking Fulani migrants into southern Nigeria during the federal government imposed COVID-19 lockdown is a pointer to the malevolent motives of the Fulani. In the first week of August 2020, the U.S. raised alarm about an impending invasion of Nigeria by both Al-Qaeda and ISIS from Nigeria's northwest. To further compromise our sovereignty, Chinese loans being recklessly contracted by the federal government of Nigeria contain clauses that cede Nigeria's sovereignty to China in the event of a default. Reckoning aggravations A to G above, the peoples of South and Middle West of Nigeria are now in the horrific realization and apprehension that the Fulani controlled federal government of Nigeria, under the superintendence of the Fulani president, Muhammad Buhari, could actually be behind the well orchestrated ethnic Western campaign being unleashed against the indigenous uh, nationalities of Nigeria by the Fulani invading Nigeria from all sides. In the face of the Sharia embraced by our compatriots in the far north of Nigeria, in a supposedly secular federation, the clear existential threat to the peoples of Southern and Middle West Nigeria represented by the aforementioned jihad-style Fulani militia onslaught brings a new urgency to the grave by constitutional grievance that have been consistently raised by the peoples of the Southern and Middle West Nigeria in course of the last five decades, bordering on the sovereignties of the constituent components of Nigeria, which has now been completely hijacked, suppressed, and subjugated by the illicit federal government of Nigeria, 
which has become a sovereign power controlled exclusively by the Fulani. We can see the map uh, that shows what we're talking about, uh, the, 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 the stretch in, uh, in, in yellowish color uh, are the 12 contiguous states of the far north that simultaneously adopted Sharia in year 2000. They are contiguous and they acted simultaneously in, 2000, in year 2000. And then we see the other part, uh, white, the, the, the eastern half of southern Nigeria, that's the lower Niger, the western half, and the middle belt, which is the white portion on this map is the alliance territory rejecting the Sharia and rejecting unitarism and feudalism. We continue. In the face of the Sharia embraced by our compatriots in the far north of Nigeria in a supposedly secular federation, the clear existential threat to the jihad style full and militia onslaught brings a new audience. Accordingly, accordingly, being accredited representatives of the indigenous nationalities of Nigeria, southern and middle west territories, caring after called the alliance territories, constituting over 75% of the population of Nigeria on behalf of the peoples of the territory, and in invocation of the universal rights appurtenant to our sovereignty as indigenous peoples of the distressed Nigerian territory, including the right to self-determination as enshrined in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples 2007, as well as the United Nations Charter on Human Rights. Having exhausted every democratic people-driven process in seeking an orderly redress for the aforementioned grave constitutional grievances emanating from the unilateral imposition of a unitary constitutional order on our supposed federal union by a section of Nigeria that has also imposed Sharia in their own part of our supposed secular union. And now, in circumstances that has become an extraordinary emergency for our people, being confronted by the clear and present danger of extermination in the hands of our supposed compatriots in the Union of Nigeria, who are pursuing an ethnic cleansing campaign against the indigenous nationalities of Nigeria, hereby declare a sovereignty dispute with the Federation of Nigeria as represented by the federal government of Nigeria on account of our repudiation and rejection of the imposed 1999 constitution of Nigeria, whose authorship was fraudulently imputed to us by the preamble to, the, to that constitution in its first claim that we, the people, made, enacted, and gave to ourselves the said 1999 constitution, with a further lie in that preamble that we had firmly and solemnly resolved to submit as our peoples and our lands into the Union of Nigeria. Furthermore, in invocation of our long suppressed collective sovereignties, we hereby proclaim a constitutional force majeure effective from the midnight of the 16th day of December in 2020, with a 90-day notice to the government of the Federation of Nigeria, the Security Council of the United Nations, the government of the United States of America, the European Union, as well as the international community, of the intention of the peoples of the Alliance territories to reconsider our continued allegiance to the disputed 1999 constitution, as well as the unitary union of death, attrition, and backwardness it forced on us. For the sake of peace and to avoid anarchy, it is our demand that in the 90-day period of this notice, the following specific actions must be undertaken by the federal government of Nigeria to firmly set in motion an irreversible process by which the aforementioned grave constitutional grievances will be addressed. A, a formal announcement by the federal government of Nigeria acknowledging the constitutional grievances and sovereignty disputes now declared by the peoples of South and Middle Belt of Nigeria. B, a formal commitment by the federal government of Nigeria to the wholesale decommissioning and jettisoning of the 1999 constitution as the basis of the Federation of Nigeria, as was done by the government of apartheid era South Africa in 1990. 
to commence the process by which the apartheid constitution of the then South Africa was eased out. C, a formal announcement by the federal government of Nigeria suspending further general elections under the disputed 1999 constitution since the winners of such elections will swear to and govern by that constitution. D, a formal initiation of a time-bound transitional transitioning process to midwife the emergence of fresh constitutional protocols by a two-state process in which the constituent regional blocks will, at the first stage, distill and ratify their various constitutions by referendum and plebiscite, and in the second stage, negotiate the terms of federating afresh, as may be dictated by the outcomes of referendum and plebiscites. E, a formal invitation to the peoples of the South and Middle Belt of Nigeria to work out and in place a transitional authority by which, which shall specify the modalities for the transitioning. Um, Mark Holiste, please, could you unshare your screen? And the host, please, could you make sure that no one else has the access to share screen for the duration except us here, please? Thank you. I take the last one again. E, a formal invitation to the peoples of the South and Middle Belt of Nigeria to work out and in place a transitional authority we shall specify the modalities for the transitioning process, including the composition and mandate of the transitional authority, as well as the time frame for the transitioning over and other ancillary matters, just like South Africa did with apartheid in 1990. By this proclamation, let it be known to all including the international money lenders, that Nigeria is now a disputed project and that while the constituent components commit to honoring existing international debt obligations, we caution that whatever obligations may arise from any foreign loans contracted by the federal government of Nigeria from the date of this proclamation may, be, may come into controversy. Similarly, all loans contracted by the federal government of Nigeria containing any clause that may cede the sovereignty of Nigeria to any or any part thereof in the event of uh, a repayment uh, default shall be disputed as illicit and in breach of the sovereignty of the federating units. We also invite politicians from the alliance territories and other political parties and all political parties operating in the alliance territory to take notice that the 1999 constitution by which the winner of any national elections in Nigeria will swear and govern is the very object of the sovereignty dispute we have just proclaimed. With a demand that further national elections premised upon the repudiated constitution be deferred forthwith for the purpose of first reworking the damaged constitutional basis of Nigeria. It is therefore our expectation that you we stand with your people, that's the politicians and the political parties, who we'll stand with the people you claim or seek to serve as politicians or political parties in their current resolve to wind up the operation of the 1999 constitution and distinguish the source of their misery. If instead of standing with your people, you choose to go to another round of general elections in 2023 under that 1999 constitution, it will simply mean that you are a part of the enemy imposed mechanism for inflicting death, misery, impoverishment upon your own people for no other reason than personal gain. The signatories to this proclamation commit themselves to providing a detailed proposition for undertaking the fundamental reconfiguration of the damaged constitutional basis of Nigeria. In this regard, the signatories adopt and incorporate the MNN Alliance's November 16, 2018 Open Memorandum to President Muhammad Buhari on the restructuring debate reported in Guardian newspaper of November 18, 2018 as an outline of our prescription. Issued this day, 
this 16th day of December, year 2020. I thank you for your audience. Okay, this demands an incredible round of applause. Everybody, just wherever you are, even though your mic is muted, this is history. This is what we have been waiting for. This is history. And it's not going to be the same again from today. In the Alliance territory have done today, what all of us have done is basically look a hundred year old monster, a hundred year old monster in the face and say, Go to hell, go to hell. Yes, we've looked here in the face and say, No more, we fear no more. It shall never be the same again from here. All right, so what we're going to take uh, right now, we're going to take comments and then questions but no, but no, but no. from the media. Questions. questions from the media first. And then we have, there's Heritage uh, TV and a couple of other media people and international media in the house. So we are going to take questions. And uh, we also have uh, Professor Akintoye in the house thank you very much sir and a couple of other lead signatories you know who are here um so for the journalists in the room who have questions um what you could do is you raise your hand and um or you type it in the chat uh, but if you raise your hand the host can unmute you and then you speak otherwise just go ahead and type your questions in the chat and then we will have your questions taken. Um, yes, so one already says, can we please share a soft copy of the declaration so that we can circulate it to Nigerians all over the world? Yes, with this proclamation, the soft, soft copy, copy is, is being, released right, being released right now to right. all the media houses in Nigeria, media internationally and social media and everyone on this call. Uh, we are also going to upload it before this call goes and you can download it, you know, right there from Zoom. Yes. Okay, so questions? Uh, yes, we have been waiting for this day all our lives. Yes, I see that coming from, from Justice for All. Yes, Tunde Obo. This is the people taking over their land. And then in the chat I hear, I am dancing. Yes, this is the day to dance. Okay, so... We're still waiting for media, questions media. or comments media. from the media first. So we're looking at the chat, you know, so questions from the media first, and then we take from the rest of the house. Comments? Okay, and while we are waiting for the media and their questions, we'd also like to invite uh, Professor Akintoye in the house. Um, to please unmute yourself and um, address the people. We thank you very much, Prof, for all the efforts that you made to uh, <laughs> make sure that the, everything goes well. But um, so here is technology. In spite of all your best effort, uh, it didn't happen. But we're so, so honored that you are here in the room. So Professor Akintoye, Please unmute your mic and then address the house. Thank you very much. Okay, and then um, the host can share Professor Akintoye's screen. Uh, uh, Prof, you're still I'm looking muted. for Professor Akintoye. Yeah. Prof is there. Prof, you're muted. No, no Prof, I can see him on the list, but uh, I'm trying to find him. There's a, 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 a lot of people in the meeting. In the <laughs> meeting, so I'm, oh yes, there he is. Okay. Professor Akintoye, yes, yes. Yeah, Professor Baji Akintoye. Okay, there is, there is nothing more to add at this point than to say that this is the turning of the tide of history for the peoples of the South and the Middle Belt. We have endured uh, suppression in the country that we belong to. And we have done everything possible, everything sensible, everything peaceful 
to, uh, uh, to address it. Uh, but we have been uh, turned down and treated as if our voices don't matter. Now we are telling the world that our voices matter. And from this point, there is no turning back. I congratulate the people of the, the peoples of the South and the Middle Belt for this historic day. And I say that we will go on and achieve the liberation mm -hmm. of our people uh, from suppression and subjugation in Nigeria. Thank you very much. It is a great day, a, a, a welcome change in the life of our people. And we thank you all for listening to us. Here we go. This is the turning of the tide of history for the peoples of the South and the Middle Belt. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tony. Awesome. Thank you, thank everybody. You. All of you young men who have done this. Uh, you know that thank I am every inch of the way every second of the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Rob. Thank, 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 thank you. Okay. Um, we do have other signatories, lead signatories in the house. Um, yes. Yeah, so please, the other signatories in the house, you are welcome to um, please identify yourself and say a word. We're also trying to identify some of you here. So many, uh, so many of you are here. Um, is uh, TK, <coughs> is TK in the house of Goriba? Okay. All right. So we have George. George is a signatory and uh, he's in the house. Okay. George, let's have a word from you. Okay, and then I would also invite, I can see that leaders from the Middle Belt, uh, this comment is from Wing Commander uh, do, uh, Dr. Hussein Omoto Show. Yeah. All right, so um, we would also like to invite any of the signatories from the Middle Belt, from Ijo Nation, from, yes, Jonah Jang and all of you present here, please would also invite you for your remarks. Okay, uh, George, let's have your remarks. Thank you so much, Ogo. This is really a great day for everyone. This is the culmination of all the hard work you know, that everybody has put in for the past two, three years. And it, it's great to be here to witness this. I'm very, very optimistic. I'm very, very happy. I had always known from the beginning that victory is ours. And we have shown resilience. We have shown patience. We have shown understanding. But the people we are dealing with are actually totally deaf and dumb. So since they are deaf and dumb, this drastic action that is legal, that is um, uh, totally um, according to the dictates of the United Nations is extremely welcome. Now we are in the driving seat. I congratulate everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. Um, okay. Uncle Fred. Fred Abebe. Is Uncle Fred in the house? The chairman of the, the, chairman of the Movement for Ni New Nigeria Alliance. Can we have your remarks? Um, okay, middle and also middle belt, the middle belt signatory, signatories from middle belt. Any of you here, please just type in the chat and let's uh, have your remarks. Okay, it's Commodore Ikiwe, a bit to Ikiwe still in the house. Air Commodore Jonah Jang, yeah. Professor Turaki, I saw you. No, please, I can't hear your word again. No. A little while ago. Can you still hear me? Or is it just Hajjanike uh, that can't hear me? I'm hearing you. Okay, okay. Hajjanike, your, maybe it's your internet. All right, let's see. Okay, Um, we have actually Wing Commander... Jose Omotoshaw joining us all the way from Australia. Okay, please oh, just unmute yourself and uh, just give us your remark. Yeah, give us your remark, excellent. It's great to witness what is happening. Um, 
the remark I want to give, uh, permit me to give it, uh, because I'm not only a retired wing commander, I've traveled all the place, I've been task force on many, many um, task forces in Bini, in Bini, in, Bini, in Port Harcourt, in, in Makodi. Uh, but the one thing is also that I'm a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And for 20 years, God has shown me about this thing that's about to happen. And oh. Nigeria is a train moving. Nobody can stop it. The new Nigeria is what we in the South belong to. And people have been shouting about it. I've foreseen it over 20 years ago when I was still in the service. So I'm very confident. Let body have no fear at all whatsoever. We are in it together. Initially, it was like pockets. But what God showed me is that there is teamwork from the south across the Niger. We can, no one can do it alone. And I'm asking, that's why my question about the middle bed, uh, we need to really, really work in the middle bed zone because uh, the Fulanis are bent on taking the middle bed with them. Okay. Thank you very much, Wing Commander Jose, and uh, thank you for that comment about the middle belt. Um, when I invite uh, Tony in at the back, he will give us a little bit of the update because very exciting things are happening in the middle belt. As a, as a matter of fact, they are fully, fully 100% into what we are doing here today. Thank you very much for that. I would also like to invite uh, ha Hajia Nike Abdurrahim. Uh, you, you are, you are the Yeye Oge of Northern Yeye. Okay, sorry, Yeye Oge. Pardon me, don't worry. When we fix Nigeria, we'll get to. Uh, <laughs> when we fix Nigeria, we fix language, we fix all these things that they have, they have messed up our brain. Good afternoon, okay, good afternoon yes. everyone. Yes, give us your remarks. Uh, Thank you. I really appreciate what is going on. I'm so excited to be here and I commend the organizer of this move. Uh, may God make it easy for us. As the Yeyeoge of Northern Nigeria, you know, I represent my people. I am the voice of the women and we are so concerned about the recent happening in the country. Nowhere is safe. And I believe the only thing to do is to do it ourselves with our own people in our own way and get it better again. Um, we know what is happening. There's no need. There's this uh, Chinese saying that says, if you want to defeat others, you must first defeat yourself. And in defeating ourselves, we have to work on our fear. You know, lack of confidence that if we come out how to say what we want, are they going to put us behind bars? If they don't put Nelson Mandela behind bars, a lot of good things won't happen in this country. So we should defeat that and then move ahead according to plan and work together as a team to achieve this feat. And I believe we are going to, you know, do great. We are going to achieve it by the grace of God. Our parents pray for it. We prayed for it because we know what is happening with our own children. Nothing is working in this country called Nigeria anymore. So whatever is going to take, if it has to be to segregate, then let's do it without fear. Please, count me in on this. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. So thank you very much indeed. Um, as the former president of the United States said in moments like this, he said that there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And what we've just done today is defeat fear because there was yeah. nothing before us other than fear. So thank you for that very excellent yeah. comment. And if he says today is the turning point, power yeah. must go back to the people. Um, Ray Chukwemeka says, throughout the night, I saw myself participating in this historic event. I am most grateful to God for allowing me to see this day. All right, do we still have any other late signatory in the house? Um, would like you to, yes, I think I just saw Reverend Palm. Yes, Reverend James Palm, please, uh, your remarks. Please unmute yourself. Um, Johnny, please unmute uh, Reverend Palm and let's have your remarks, sir. Awesome. Oh, we, we can hear him. We, we can hear him. He's speaking, but we can't hear him. 
Please unmute him and then let him unmute himself. <coughs> okay, Reverend Pam, can you go ahead? Okay, we're still having some audio challenge with Reverend Pam, who also happens to be one of the lead signatories from the middle belt. Okay, all right. Oh, you can hear, I see a thumbs up. Mike, Mike is here. Okay. Um, can you all hear Reverend Pam? Reverend Pam is speaking, but we can't hear him from here. Or is it just us? Okay. All right. We also have Mike. Mike, can Hello, you try your intro? Okay. Mike, can you unmute yourself and uh, give your remarks? I think we also have Mike, who happens to be a signatory as well. Um, okay. You can hear him as well. Okay. All right. So, Tony, why don't you go ahead and take a couple of um, questions or comments that have already arisen from the media in the chat? One of them was. Um, before we talk, we take this one. Mm. Um, somebody, made, the wing commander, made a comment about the middle belt. Mm. Can you give us some update? Not just the middle belt, but the other parts of the alliance. Mm. How everybody? And I know in the past couple of days you've been <laughs> traveling all over the whole place and engaging. Give our people a sense of the level of deep engagement. That because it's easy to think that it's just people on this call, you know, and maybe a few other people. Just give us some idea about the deep in with the people, the owners of the land that has happened in the past couple of days. Right. The uh, what we see today is a culmination of a 21 year journey that began right in 1999. Uh, so Let's, uh, let's mute ourselves and hear ourselves. Uh, Dikurulahi, please mute yourself. We can hear you. Dikurulahi, please mute yourself. Thank you. So as it were, uh, the, 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 the event we see today is a culmination of a 21-year process that began right from the point uh, the 1999 constitution was in Uh, collapse of uh, the 1960 consensus, 1960. and um, it came in five phases that uh, is now at the terminal phase. The, the, this, this, this is the concluding part of the terminal phase. In the first phase, we had to get the, the nationalities of Nigeria to sit down and examine their situation and the options are available. That was how Pronapo came. He went around the whole country. Uh, Nadeko, yes, was uh, successful in getting the soldiers out of government house, but the constitution by which uh, we had to go to that uh, democracy was not uh, settled. And so the soldiers succeeded in, uh, you know, uh, enforcing on us fraudulently uh, the constitution they made in 1979 uh, through all kinds of uh, underhand uh, processes from 1975. And so it was a matter of engaging the problem for what it was. And so we said all the structures created by Nigerians since 1966 by decree uh, will not be the basis of any discussion. It's the nationalities that will have to, the Yorubas, Yoruba, the Joas, the Ogonias, the Ogonias. And that was how the, the, the conference of 2005, the Pronaco that happened between 2005 and 2006, uh, came into being. We will recall that at the time we were going around the country to, uh, you know, invite people into these uh, nationalities. It took uh, it took uh, three, four years of intensive, uh, you know, engagement with the nationalities. Uh, in 2004, it came to where we announced uh, that uh, we were going uh, to have a, a meeting of a meeting of the sovereign components of Nigeria to to examine the options uh, open because the, the the country was going down and so. Uh, Basanjo was president at the time. Uh, what did he do? He went uh, on, on national broadcast to say that uh, we were committing treason if we called uh, a meeting of the owners of Nigeria. Well, we, 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 that, that, uh, that challenge 
simply drew out more people in support of what we are doing. And it came to where he had to change his own, uh, you know, in an attempt to get ahead of uh, the initiative. He, that was how uh, Basujo set up uh, the McCarthy Committee in December of 2004 uh, to work out uh, what became uh, the 2005 conference. Well, uh, our, our, our quarrel with all of what they were doing at the time, which, for which reason we wanted to do it by ourselves, is that uh, the, the, only, the, the task of deciding, the right of deciding, the right and prerogative of deciding the union agreement with the constitution is, is uh, exclusive to the constituents. The sovereign constituents of Nigeria are the only ones who can determine whether they want to be in a union and uh, if so, on what terms? Those are two separate questions. And that's why you see the constitution starting with the preamble, we the people have solemnly resolved to live together. That's one subject matter. And then the other one is uh, making and giving unto on ourselves a uh, constitution. That's another subject matter, that the memo and articles of a company. Now, uh, yes, we discussed uh, all the way to 1960, from the time the British were planning to leave. But that agreement, union agreement that was reached in Lancaster House, that Nigeria shall be a federation of, uh, of, uh, of autonomous regions that will have control and ownership over their assets, contributing uh, for the upkeep of the center, and uh, uh, generally, uh, you know, a secular union. These were fundamentals. And uh, to tell us how how far we have departed from those uh, fundamentals from the time we abandoned, abandoned uh, what we agreed in 1966, it will be recalled that uh, these killings happen in the middle belt today over, uh, you know, uh, from elements that, uh, that seem bent uh, on a jihad. Those, uh, those uh, the Willings Commission, as at the time independence was being negotiated, uh, quite apart from the question of being a federal union and being a secular union, they, the uh, Amadou Bello, who was a leader of the northern region of the time, wanted Sharia, uh, you know, for northern regions. And so uh, it was a, a matter of a fundamental compromise for the Sharia to be removed because the Middle Belt, uh, Joseph Tucker and others who didn't uh, feel that the people of Middle Belt could become part of that north that would be governed by Sharia. You know, so the Willings Commission did a... Uh, uh, draw up a compromise in which Sharia was removed and the penal code uh, in place as the basis of middle belt that could have been a region of its own at the time, uh, becoming a part of uh, Nigeria. And so when in year 2000, that fundamental compromise was uh, toppled and Sharia imposed, uh, it, 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 it simply amounted to a cessation from the secular union. And these are all the kind of things that changed for which reason uh, it was the contention of the nationalities that it was the exclusive business, like the owners of a company have the exclusive uh, right to make their memo and article. It's not the hired management of a, of a company that makes their memo and article. That is what it sounds like when National Assembly begins to say that they want, or the government begins to say that they want to say. So we went on from Pronaco, we agreed on what we could do, we had a draft. We went on in 2007 to go to court to say, look, we didn't make this constitution to afford the government opportunity to lead the process so that we can do it like South Africa did. They wouldn't listen. Things got worse. So by 2011, that MNN uh, legal declaration that, uh, by which these uh, nationalities now came to say this constitution can, can, cannot be based. So they were, we're not anarchists. So we put in place a process by which uh, the regional blocks will have to make out their own uh, charters and constitutions ahead of when we go back to that uh, discussion. And then uh, we've, we've, we've come every step of the way to where they subjected uh, their decisions to uh, some kind of ratification by solemn assemblies. It was when they had finished all those solemn assemblies that they came back in uh, Lagos in 2018, uh, December 11, to, uh, to the, uh, the Freedom Park uh, proclamation that now uh, is being uh, uh, you know, implemented from today. They decided that they will not go to any further elections under the constitution that made them slaves in their land. That's why we're gathered here today. So it's not a casual uh, thing. And everybody in all the territories involved, you know, had the opportunity. As recent as I uh, said, uh, you know, the one week ago, we just came back from the, the middle bed where we were concluding our, our discussions with uh, people that we have done so in the East, we've done so in every, various parts of the West, overseas. Our people in the diaspora, we sat down with them in town halls across uh, the various countries. So that's, that's how we got to where we are now. It's not a casual thing that uh, just began uh, yesterday. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm pleased. Um, Hello, somebody is inadvertent. 
Somebody is in a photo. Please share when they are through. Okay. What's the problem? More tomorrow are online, probably. Please mute your microphone, please. There's no point in doing that. It's very rude to do that. Mute your microphone. Oh, you're not admitted to speak. Mute please your mute your microphone until you are admitted to speak. And host, please, I don't know who is sharing a white screen. Could you please keep people from sharing? Someone is sharing a white screen. Yeah, right? I think it's James Pam. James Pam. James Pam, please unshare. Okay, thank you very much. Please. Um, okay. Uh, that was a bit distracting, so I wasn't sure. Okay, so well, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, the summary is there's a lot of engagement. This is not a casual thing, like uh, Tony just said. There's a lot of engagement, you know, with the people. And this is a movement whose time has come. So we want to take a few uh, questions. One is, and I think one pertinent question here for everybody is um, people want to know, what is the next line of action after this declaration? Mm. What is expected of us as mm. citizens? Mm. What next? Mm. Just very briefly, give us succinctly. And um, before Tony answers, um, I think that Johnny just confirmed if people put in their mails, because I would like everybody on the call right now to get yeah, the text yeah. immediately. So if people uh, put in their emails in the chat, Johnny, can you save them? Can you, can you extract the emails? And so we can send out immediately. We I can send I out can. the text. Uh, I can. All right, so, okay, we'll save, we'll save the chat and then extract the email. So everybody put your email address and then immediately after this event, you are going to get the text as it is, and then you can begin to share. Um, Ademola Akintoye says, engineer Akintoye says, with the indigenous nations within the fraudulent determined confines known as Nigeria in the South and Middle Belt, must true. all now fully cooperate in all possible phases of human life, security, economy policy, etc., to establish our sovereign will. All right, very good, excellent message. And that is why we are here today. So briefly, what next? Right, uh, before I go to that, uh, before I go to the what next, uh, okay. Professor, Akintoye and the rest of the leadership of their life. Yo, uh, Ibrahim. Uh, Ibrahim. Just, what about Michi Tibu? They send message, Joe Tolo. Mr. Ibrahim, can you mute? I just muted him. Host has just muted him. Man. Uh, please let it, let it be noted that this uh, proclamation will be on all platforms, uh, on Facebook, uh, everywhere people can go on Google, everywhere people can find the information. It will be all over the place. There are millions of people already taking it on to spread. Our task is to take on it and spread it further. The leadership of the Alliance mandates me to announce to us that this, that this proclamation of today this sovereignty dispute proclamation of today will be presented to the president of Nigeria, will be presented to the UN, will be presented to the US and European Union, and all of those who might be asking what's going on in Nigeria. And uh, the, 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 the various regional blocks in Nigeria, they have their all kinds of uh, leadership. Everybody will have to, those who, those who want, who are fed up with Nigeria, those who are fed up with Nigeria, who now want to become countries of their own, this, this data will be presented to them to examine whether the answer to their problem is there. Those who want the Afra, those who want to go to the public, those who want the African, those who want the cost control. Those who say there should be good governance. The young people who went out to the streets the other time, this document is now in your hand. Everything you complained about, SARS and the police that shoot, the army that chase you around and leave the criminals and, and murderers from afar, all of the electricity you don't have, all of, all, of, all of the quota system that put mediocrity ahead of excellence in your country, all of the infrastructure that will never be there because of exclusive lists, everything that has turned your life to what it is now 
in which you are running to various parts of the world to become slave again all over. Those, this document is in your hand. The solution to that situation is in this document. If we put our hands on it and insist on taking back our sovereignty that have been hijacked by Nigeria for 60 years and more, we will, be, we, will be, we will get to that destination we seek. We only need to stop those who renew the life of the constitution. The winner of any election, for those who may be saying, oh, let us go, go election and get it there, all right. The winner of any election will have to govern by the 1999 constitution, which creates all these situations, like apartheid constitution, it's worse than apartheid. Now, the only way that constitution has survived for 21 years is that the life is renewed every four years by elections. Luckily for us, only political parties contest elections. And what happens is that because of what they get from going to contest the election, the senators, the governors, we know what they take home. The governors take billions every month. The senators take 50, 50 million house members. Everybody, you know, managing Nigeria under this constitution that, that breeds corruption and protects the beneficiaries of corruption comprehensively beyond our reach. The only reason they want the constitution to remain the way it is, even in the midst of all our consensus, is because of that personal gain. And so it is within our reach, the rest of us, to, to insist that the political parties must close shop at this time. That's the only task left. Let us take the document, digest it, take it to our communities, take it to everywhere those from Nigeria who are stranded in all parts of the world, we travel quite around the globe, and we see our people slaving away the second time, being killed like people without a homeland, just because their country is not working. For a country that sells, Three million barriers of crude oil. So we say, we are saying that it is within our reach. What we have to do is to digest this information and spread it amongst our people. The action we need to take is to is to insist that the political parties must shut down any further preparations towards any elections. Must close shop so that we can go and you know, uh, uh, rework the constitution by which the winner of any elections will have to go. If we do this, if we do this, it won't take us three months to get to the end of all these problems. Absolutely. If we fail to do it, they will drag us to another election, have another four years, and we'll have ourselves to blame if they get another four years. God forbid, because what has started, we're going to complete. Okay. Right. So there's just one comment. Just one very brief comment, Tony. Mm. I still want you to address it because it's coming up again. And mm. then please just very, very briefly right. so that we can round off and then send it and people can start running with it. Right. Now, the question is, um, what is the next line? What can we do? Then somebody actually expanded on it. He said, suppose the, uh, the Buhari or this government comes up with uh, resistance and then they are whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what's that they don't want this to end you know just you know talking about it so what is the next and the owners so the the right the right to self-determination is inalienable according to the un instrument on the subject the remedy available to nigerians today in all of what they are suffering is in self-determination the constitution we have on the table today was done in was imposed in the name of our self-determination okay and what what we need to do, what we need to do right now is to insist that this constitution cannot be basis of the union going further. And therefore, no, 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 but anybody discussing the election in your neighborhood is telling you, I want you to remain the slave you are. I want you to be available to be killed. I want you to operate without electricity. I want mediocrity to continue to rule over your excellence. And so it is within our reach to just face those political parties and tell them this far, no more. To close shop. We don't need to go to any far place in all the street corners 
where they operate. The only reason they are there is that they are planning to take their turn in this robbery enterprise that Nigeria has become under this constitution. Nigeria has become a, 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 a criminal enterprise. All right, so I want to thank you very much, Tony. One last item. All of those who may wish to be a part of this, from this evening, I will be opened an online, petition, an online petition in which everybody can become signatory to this document by just clicking in their names on that uh, online petition. And there's a website already deployed to receive everybody who may want to know what's going on and want to participate. That website is called freedomfromnigeria.com. Freedom, www freedomfromnigeria.com. So the actions will include signing up to that petition because we already have about 20 million people whose uh, signatures have been processed for the UN so that the whole world can see that we are together in making this demand. Let it also be noticed, noted that we are not anarchists. We are, we, our quarrel is not with the government. We are not asking them to leave government house. The five points of demand center around a demand uh, around a plan for transitioning and orderly transitioning away from the constitution of death towards the constitution of life as we may determine in our sovereignty, in our right to self-determination. And therefore, just as like South Africa did, before somebody comes saying that uh, we want to come and take over, we are not interested, no, anybody who is interested in going to government house under this constitution is a criminal. That, the, that his own people should try to stop from going to sell him to the enemy that wants to keep everybody in bondage. And so it is a matter of asking that we go the option Frederick de Klerk adopted for apartheid South Africa in 1990 to agree that we have not made a constitution, to agree that the one that is imposed is not working. Luckily, the National Assembly a few weeks ago owned up to the reality that the question of constitution making is beyond their powers. If the vice president of Nigeria in, in late September raised an alarm that the walls of Nigeria are cracked, we went on two days after to tell the country that, that those cracks are coming from the damaged constitutional basis. We are all trapped in that house. If we do not take this action when we can, that house will deteriorate progressively to when it falls on our head. And remember that the UN rapporteur that came in 2019, September, did turn in a report that the constitutional arrangement is like pressure cooker for injustice. And that it has become a danger to the global community. 200 million people that will be seeking refuge if Nigeria you know, erupts. We are in a position to stop that. It is within our reach to solve this problem and we can, we can put our hands to it and deliver an outcome in a matter of months. Okay. All right. So um, I really want to thank every one of you, um, all the lead signatories to this proclamation today and everyone who's been here. Um, again, if you haven't put your email on the chat, please do that so that immediately after this, I show you that within uh, 10 minutes after we end this proclamation, you are going to get the PDF copy of the proclamation. And I want to thank all of you who have come for this historic event and then who have stayed on and to let you know that the engagement continues. Um, the Alliance, you know, there are different groups and Tony is quite accessible. Um, I've also seen Daughters of the Truth here and a couple of other people, I've seen Heritage Television there. They have um, a YouTube channel that's got a lot, you know, hours and hours of dozens of hours of materials that uh, Tony has put up there with Heritage Television. So you can also check them on YouTube and check their website. And then there's also the Lower Niger uh, Congress Media YouTube channel. There is also the face Facebook where you can hear a lot more. Okay, so let the conversation continue. Hello. Ilanomo Odua. Hello. Website. So let's continue all this engagement and please 
um, always come back, you know, to us um, and come back to um, to uh, to Tony. Go to the website and uh, to the website. It's an interactive one. People will uh, to answer. yes, it's exactly. To, take, uh, to keep engaged, and so I want to thank all of you for being here. And uh, the uh, conversation continues after this. Thank you very much indeed. God bless you, and thank God for this historic event that has happened today. And God bless you. We hear from you. Hear from us as soon as it's important we hear from us again okay, okay bye for now can we put a couple of questions up because i've got some few questions that need to be addressed please if possible this, this is from uh, heritage tv that's correct it's, it's from heritage television because my partners in the uk are waiting for me to address these questions please if possible only if possible let's do it this way eh? We can we can move on to the uh, Heritage TV UK in, as you synergize with uh, the other you know uh, the media houses for a program to dissect what has been put on the table. The draft is already uh, sent to your outfit and the other journalists uh, and media houses uh, present. Let us uh, allow the other people to go and then uh, let every town hall, let every garden everywhere you know, be, be centered on discussing this uh, grand proposition that can solve this problem and end this bloodshed. Thank you all. Thank you. Patience. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Johnny. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.